sometimes it comes down to um, um, part of what I call recovery. Um, it's one of the biggest issues in the 21st century, which is lack of recovery or staleness. If you were an exercise scientist, you might call it overtraining. People um, failing to put back what has been lost. So if we're, if we're constantly taking from the system, but we're not replacing, well, that's not a, that's not a good thing. We, we see that in, in conditions like osteoporosis. So you have, you know, calcium is being released, but not enough calcium being deposited. So you've got this uh, disparity between uh, production versus removal. And this happens then in exercise science as well with athletes. They're out training seven days per week. They're outputting, outputting, outputting. And what they're not doing is they're not inputting. And part of that input is in fact quiescence, is the need for quietness. Um, but it's also the need to give the body the opportunity to recover. In other words, if you want to benefit from having exerted yourself um, and exerting yourself does what? I mean, let's think about that for a moment. That's another great conversation, by the way, from to, within the exercise science world because people talk about overload and that you must overload the system. What does overload mean? Does overload mean that you do more at a particular time than you're really capable of dealing with? Yes, in, in, in essence, that's what it means. Does that lead to then structural damage? Yes, and therefore you learn from that. So the body then says, oh, I've been structurally damaged. I'm going to repair the damage but I'm also going to actually make it a little bit stronger so that when this person does that movement again, that it won't damage me. I'll be capable of being able to deal with the forces. So that now what do you do? Well, now you increase the forces. So this is what happens in exercise science. You either increase the number of reps you do, or you increase the weight, or you reduce the rest period, or you do it faster, or there's a whole range of things that you can do in order to be able to um, adapt this principle of scientific principle of training to get the benefit. And um, so, so there's, and there's different needs when you're 22 and you want to go to those 30 minute high intensity workout classes where the sweat stings your eyeballs, you know, cause that's what you need in life. Okay. But I think as you get older, which is now bringing us back to the very beginning of the conversation, Yasmin, about this intuitive feel as you get older i think what you find is that less is more and that you don't you know it's not about having to do you know three marathons in in five days or it's not about having to go in and do you know tough mothers or whatever you know that they're fun by the way tough i don't know if you've ever done those you know go to the muck and climbing over walls and they can be fantastic in fact i love that form of exercise it, those kind of skills because that's what we did that's how we evolved we evolved to take an apple out of an apple tree or to climb over the rocks to get out to pick up a tasty morsel on the beach but now we're we're it's barbells and dumbbells and kettlebells and that's that's fun as well don't ruin anybody's party but um you know Sometimes, anyway, as you, certainly as you get older, as I say, you you discover a more intuitive way of moving, and um, and you find that less is more. I can only share how it's emerged for me through, for for my body, John. I mean, I exercised for many years and then went into Pilates, and this intuitive part, um, it's that urge to climb a tree, and I'm finding that. Um, with this recovery, I love this. I love you're the first person I'm speaking to that's talking about this recovery. It, it speaks to me because it feels like that's what needs to happen. A restoration, a resetting of this inner rhythm of your body so that it, it feels like it wants to climb a tree or, you know, run. I mean, we've been in shutdown and I haven't run for a while. And suddenly I, I had this urge to run, run just with, for the joy of movement. So mm -hmm. yeah, could you talk a bit about that inner joy that we feel, our, our nature to, to, to do those things? Well, I think that comes down to what we call specificity. And so there are those individuals, if you think of it from a prescriptive viewpoint, there, you, you have to understand a person's life. You have to listen to a person's story. I don't think that there is necessarily a one fits all. There can be. 
and let's just take it over a seven day period. So over the period of one week, of course, there can be a class that people will go to and everybody can share that one class. And then within that one class, there could be adaptations and progressions as suited to the individual that's part of specificity. Um, however, as I say, this is the beauty about a therapist like ourselves, Yasmin, um, and the, the difference between ourselves and the, that type of medical practitioner, such as a doctor, is that we do have the time to be able to spend um, quality time with an individual and learning and listening about their life so that we can then, as uh, experienced and knowledgeable practitioners, we can then spot those areas that require, you know, perhaps quietness, or perhaps they need, as you just said, maybe you need to, to run a little bit. Now, of course, you don't want to go from not running to suddenly running. So it needs to be done in a phased, in a phased basis. But um, it's about recognizing, as I say, those individuals who need more of one thing and less of another. The type of people that would be coming on a course like this are those that help people with chronic pain or um, yeah, most, most fibromyalgia, those kind of conditions and allowing that person to recover, but also not to be afraid to move, but giving them the space. And this is why the intuitive part works really well. Um, but even, if, you know, because we all know how to move, right, John? I, I don't know how you, you view this, but I always say to people, you don't need to teach somebody how to move in their everyday life. We, we, as Yark van der Vaal talks about, we are born with this wholeness. You might need to be reminded, um, and that shape-shifting pattern, I mean, I've watched people, I, I can have 10 people in a class and I'm just guiding them intuitively. Everyone's moving in a different way, but still finding the same patterns. So at the heart of it, there's that pandiculation. And in every motion, the body seems to expand and then release and it's recovering, it's taking care of itself. And then from there, they, they can you know, find the joy to run. And, and like you say, I wouldn't say to someone, okay, now you're gonna train to run. It's recovering and then having this urge, the urge comes from within to do more. Well, it's complicated, yes, actually, because I could simply turn around and say, yes, I agree with all of that. But I do think that there's a, a context needed as well. When somebody comes to me and they're looking for some advice on physical activities, of course, you can give sweeping advice on physical activities. For example, walking is just the most wonderful thing that anybody can do. Um, we do need uh, some impact because we have evolved on Earth and we are working with gravity. And so gravity is nutritious. Gravity is very nutritious for, uh, for the internal milieu of the human body. If your bones are to be healthy, if your tissues are to be healthy, then we need to actually have ground reaction force. We need to have impact. So not just a returning force, but we actually need impact. Um, because that then is the stimulus to which the, the body reacts. And that's what helps then to provide the information for the laying down of hydroxyapatite and for keeping bones uh, healthy. So a nice little bit of, um, of impact is quite, is quite good. That, that's a really good point, John. And it's just like a spontaneous 10 minutes. You, it's like a buoyancy in the body. So there's that part. That's the, the one question I had. Walking, yes, absolutely. 